Uh, that was the first thing, to get your app. Now, what I did before was I rooted the phone. This turned out to be pretty complicated and it quit working pretty soon for Windows users. So I'm thinking, for purposes of this class, you probably don't really need to do this at all. This way you will end up with a phone that has Google Play and it's rooted. Now what we're doing in this class, I don't think you're gonna to need to download any apps from Google Play. So I think I'll just skip to the alternative, 145, making a rooted emulator. Um, you can do this, it involves going and getting something called um, root AVD. You get it from Git, and then you run these commands that are supposed to root your phone by replacing the virtual memory with a hacked virtual memory, and it is kind of confusing, and it used to work on Windows and the Mac, and then it stopped working on Windows. And I haven't done it in about six months on the Mac either. I don't know if it's gonna work. And I say, let's try this other alternative project, which I think is just easier for this class. I'd recommend skipping that one and going to 145. This one should be easy. All you have to do is choose a device without the arrow, like Pixel 3a XL. So you launch Android Studio, and make a new device, create device, and so 3a XL, this one. Then next, and um, Android 11 is what I used without Google API, because I was doing it on a Windows, here, I imagine I should probably, oh, it looks like 33 is what I used before. Apparently I've done it before, and I'll try using 33. Uh, it looks like that's what I've found works before. I'm gonna find out. This is on the Mac M1. So I'll finish, and as before, I'm just gonna turn up the memory so that if I do get the phone, huh, the RAM is pretty small on this one. Let's try making it 4096. All right, finish. All right, and there it is making the 3A XL. All right, by the way, notice that after I started the other phone, it swelled up to eight gigs. So this original at 512 megs is some kind of illusion. The first time you start your phone, it will get bigger. So let's see if this will start up. Okay, it's already running. I just clicked it twice, I think. So, um, yeah, there it is, all right. Ah, good, booting right up. Good, well while that's coming up, let's look at the instructions. So once you've got your phone going, now we wanna connect with ADB. And supposedly ADB will be connected in the path. Let's see if this works. I think, I'm, if not, you have to execute this command to specify the path. Then you should have ADB in the command line on your Mac. So if I go to a terminal and I get out of here and clear, all right. And it doesn't matter if, if I hit ADB, I've got ADB, that's the help message for ADB. ADB is Android Debug Bridge, it is the main tool you use to interact with Android phones. So I can now do ADB devices, and it's installed automatically with, um, uh, with Android Studio. Notice I have two devices attached, so I'm running two phones, which is pretty annoying, 54, 54, 56. I don't know which one is which, uh, to make my life simple, I'm going to go here and see if I can figure out how to turn off one of them. Uh, let's see what I have. Window. Um, I don't really know how to tell which devices are running. Um, let's see if I do this. I'm trying different key presses to move over to it, and none of them are doing me any good. Let's, uh, this is a Mac. So, oh, here we are. Here's the two devices running, okay. I see them down there. Well, I'll just kill them from here. See if I can, there's one. There's, okay, I'm running two devices, okay. I want the 3A XL. Okay, let's close this one. All right, there, that's the one that I created earlier. And uh, I don't need that one right now. This is the one I want. All right, let's see what that does. Now, if I try this again. Ah, now I only have one device, okay, good. Otherwise, I'd have to somehow try and figure out which device is which, and I don't know how. So now, um, I can do an ADB shell, an SUK, ADB shell. Okay, now I'm on the Android phone. Now, it's interesting to understand what's going on in Android phone. If I do print working directory, I'm at the root of the whole phone. If I do LS, I will see um, standard, um, let's do an LS minus L, all right. I'm gonna see a fairly standard 
uh, Linux file system. Uh, here I've got a um, directory called bin um, data dev etc and so on uh, a lot of common things mount things you'll see in any Linux install and then a few others and the most important thing for us is data now I tried to find a tool that would make a complete copy of all the 13 gigs on the Android phone and I couldn't find any easy way to do that the recommended way to do that is to use DD and send it over the network but that didn't work for me at all I had terrible trouble setting it up. It just didn't work at all. And I finally just gave up. And I'm going to settle for just copying the data folder, which is probably all you want anyway. So this is more of the kind of thing you would do for instant response than perhaps for police forensics, where you'd really like a complete copy of the phone. Now, the way you typically do it for police forensics is you pay a lot of money and you get a commercial device like um, Celebrite that will plug into the phone and copy all the data off. Doing it with free software tools is possible but difficult, and I couldn't find a good way to do it in this emulator. But for incident response, and for a lot of investigations, all you want is the data folder because that's where all the data for the apps is. All the rest of this is the operating system. And who cares about the operating system, really? If you go to the data folder, and then do ls minus l, um, you'll see I have permission denied. I'm not root. Now, this is a problem. If I'm not root, I can't copy all the data out of there because, of course, your data is personal and you shouldn't be able to get in there unless you can log in as the real user. So I have to be the super user. Now, all I have to do is SU and now I'm the super user. You see the prompt change from a dollar to a pound. That's because this is the unapproved rooted phone. This is the easy way to get root. Now I can do LS minus L in here. I can see everything and in here I will see every app. Um, which is backup. If I go in data again, there in the data, here's where all the apps are, in the data, data folder. And here you see, right now I haven't installed any third-party apps, so all there is is the original Google Android apps like the dialer for the phone and the uh, clock and the Bluetooth and stuff like that and photos, all the default apps that Google puts in the phone are here. But anyway, there's all, each one of these is the folder and in each folder is the database containing emails and phone calls and whatever else has been happening. So all you need is a copy of the slash data folder and that will include all the app information and you can just make that with simple Linux commands. So once you have root, you can do it. So that's, this is the easiest way to make a rooted Android emulator. Just do M145, uh, much easier than the more valuable M142, which gives you a rooted phone with Google Play, which is useful if you want to analyze apps from the store, which is really a lot of fun because the apps are incredible disasters. It's in Android apps are horrible. They're the way Windows 95 apps are. They're just security disasters, and you can easily find huge flaws in them. Um, so if you want to do security research, it's a very good place to start. But that's not what we're doing in this class. So for this class, just do M145. So let me stop this one.